Hello, my name is Hassan Shahid and welcome to this tutorial with Sencha Grid. The Sencha platform helps you rapidly build data-intensive cross-platform, responsive enterprise applications. Sencha has high-performance UI components which are customizable and easy to integrate. Work smart with Sencha. This tutorial will show you how to build a React Grid using Sencha Grid for React user interfaces. That is G-R-U-I. You can build fast, scalable, and simple components with loading, editing, and scrolling functionality. Sencha grids are also scalable, meaning they can seamlessly display millions and millions of rows of data for you. You can easily plug it into your project and get started by customizing your list and tables and modifying them with the help of Sencha GRUI. Some of the key features of Sencha GRUI are virtual columns, infinite scrolling, slider paging toolbar, column drag and drop, column editors. In this tutorial, we are going to cover all of these and see them in action. To get started, you can fill out this form over here, which requires some basic information from you so that you can try the community edition of Sencha GRUI that is free to use. After this, you can get the package detail and how to install it, followed by a very detailed documentation. First, we will try to use Sencha GRUI in our own application and look at its powerful features. I have created a new React application with Create React App and installed Sencha NPM package. Now let's get started. You can see the Sencha package over here. And now I will go to our app.json to create a basic Sencha grid. I'll get rid of all of this code and we'll start from scratch. I'll take React. After this, I'll use Sencha Grid so I can say from Sencha Grid. I'll be using Sencha Grid from in this the column, maybe some more columns that it offers. Don't get confused if you don't get this, it's just a demo. We'll deep dive into the, into the documentation further on. And we'll also use Sencha Grid with Teams with Teams and I'll use uh, I'll use GRUI CSS. All right. Once that is done, uh, let's define our functional component, or let's say let's start with um, the class component. I'll export default class app that extends, it extends, sorry, my bad, extends react dot component. We are directly going to render and we can say const data. Uh, we can have some sort of data. Um, I have this data over here. I'll just copy paste it. This is just some dummy data that I wanted to try. And once we have that here, we can say return. And this is where we are going to use Sencha Grids. So I can, I'm going to wrap it with Sencha Grid. And it accepts some properties. That is the data that we just made and some styling. Um, I just wanted to cover the whole Bad width, and it's going to use 100 viewport width with the height. Um, let's give it a 55 viewport window height. Now, what we are actually wrapping with Sencha Grid, we are going to say we need some column, and under this column. It ex expects some properties which are field and this is going to be the column one. This is basically us mapping the data to the column. So it's called the field, right? And then we can say the text what it's going to display. So I'm going to say column one. That's like the alias of the column. 
what we are calling it uh, when we're displaying the column. And for the actual data, we can say that, oh, it's going to be flex one as well. Once we have that, we can just, you know, replicate that. And we can say, we can get rid of this flex. And we can say column two, column three, and this is going to be column two and column three. Um, let's try this column, uh, checkbox column. That is also the support by Sencha Grid. And it's going to be field. Uh, we are now at column four, if I'm right. Yeah, we are. And now we can say text is going to be column four. And let's align it to the right. Okay, once that is done, we have wrapped our Sencha grid and, um, you know, use some columns to display our data. And let's see this in action. Now that I have run my application, I'm going to go on localhost 3000. And here it's going to give me this beautiful, beautiful grid that we just built in less than, what, 20 line of codes? Um, that's just great support from Sencher Grids. Now let's deep dive into it more and look at the documentation um, to see, you know, what Sencher GRUI offers. Let's dive into the detailed documentation to see all of the things that Sencher GRUI offers. I'm on this link that that's basically a storybook um, by the Sencher GRUI team to sort of add the documentation. We'll go to the features and We'll go to the docs and look at the demos first. Now that we are into the demo section, we can see some beautiful grids over here. We have the checkbox column that we just used and some more. And to the next demo, there's an infinite grid. Infinite grid is basically lazy loading the data for our grid. So if I scroll down, you'll see a loader and then it will load the next, next portion of data. You can look at over here. Did you see that? Uh, they also have page generated grids. So it offers uh, this page generated layout over here. If I click on page number two and then page number three and so on. So yes, these these were, these were are some demos of um, Sencha GRUI. Now moving on to data grid. The data grid is basically what we are wrapping our entire application with so that we can use columns to display our table or let's say our grids. For all of these demos, you can look at the code over here, how it's being used. And it's something similar to what we did, but you know, somewhat similar. So yeah, uh, after data grid, we have columns. For every column, we have some properties that it accepts alignment, how you want the column to look like. By default, they are left aligned. If you want them to be, you know, on center, you can do that as well. All right. Columns, it has types as well. Um, it can take strings, booleans, checkboxes, integer, number, short column, decibel column, money, and some percentage, date-wise, some color columns, phone, email, and address. After columns, we have data. Uh, for data, we have lists. Um, for these lists, we can add some items, you know, dynamically and remove them and also update them. So if I were to click on this, it will give me a column one and column two, what I want to update it to. So let's say I want to call it Hassan and the next column Shahid and I'll update it. Voila, it's going to, you know, dynamically edit or update it for me as well. It gives you the sorting feature as well. Um, you can do multi-column multi, -sort, multi -column sort or single single column sort. Um, it has some validators as well. So let's say if I wanted to, um, you know, fix my column to Boolean and didn't want um, the user to any enter anything else other than, you know, the Boolean values, I can validate it as well. 
once the user enters their, their data. Um, for integers, validation for you know all of the types or for all of the columns that it provides. It also offers the drag and drop features for columns and rows so that you can reorder them as you want to see them. Let's say if I wanted the company column to be you know at the last of the um, column list, I can do this do this as well. You know, just drag it and drop it anywhere I want. Along with I can do it with rows as well. If I want the first row to be the last one, I can just do it like this. So yes, that's feasible as well. It gives you the editing feature as well. You can edit cells and the rows as well. So if I go if I go and click and click on the row, it will edit the whole row. Sencha also offers responsive layouts. So if you were to use your web application in different screen layouts, um, it's going to be a responsive grid. So you can check it out over here and demo it. You can also do localization with Sencha. That is, if you were to use the date column feature and you wanted, you wanted um, let's say, Arabic dates, um, it offers localization as well. You can look at the code over here, um, date time format locales that you can, you know, sort of use. We have a feature of navigation as well, um, so that you can click on the row and navigate with the help of your keyboard. You can navigate by header, you can navigate by columns, you can navigate by cells and rows, and so on. Scrolling is probably the most favorite feature of Sencha Grid for me, um, since it's it allows you to sort of you know have a virtual store so that you can add infinite scrolling. Your no matter how much data you have, or you know it, it can be millions and millions of rows but it's still going to be smooth. Reason being, it allows, you know, infinite scrolling. So the, the, the data that you have only on the screen is being rendered. The other data is not being rendered. That's why your Sencha grid and Sencha list are so fast. Now looking at the properties of uh, Sencha grid, it has some properties like column lines, columns, data, group footer, height headers, infinite, all of these properties that you can pass on to your Sencha grid and it will do the following. Some item ripples, some row lines, shadow, sortable, some extra styles if you want, and variable height. After properties, we have events. And for events, let's say if you were to um, complete a checkbox or complete a form, um, these are like hooks in you know, React. Um, so if you want to do some action, when the user is editing or let's say selecting their um, rows in the Sencha grid, you can call and do uh, what you require in that specific time. After events, we have some use cases. You can also use our custom component inside Sencha grid. So let's say um, I wanted to use my custom component for this column one. I can plug it in. Um, you can look at the code over here. Here's a custom component and um, we have just um, pass this custom component into the render property so that it can be displayed as we want and the data is being passed automatically to our custom component. Now that we have seen all of the documentation for Sencha GRUI and their grids, um, all of these features are, are not available in the community edition, that is the free edition. So you'd have to set up the licensing and um, the pricing for your, um, you know, full standard uh, GRUI application. You can visit GRUI over here and see the pricing for this. There is Community Edition, Enterprise Edition, and Pro Edition. There are some next steps for Sencha Grid. You can see the React Grid over here, Web Test Step, Performance Benchmark with Sencha Grid, some training, demos, and documentation. You can also read our blogs at this link. Thank you for being with me for how to build a React Grid with Sencha Grid. Thank you. Head over to Sencha.com and download. Take care and goodbye.